Hey everybody, this is Junk Man. We're back again to talk Star Wars and everybody's favorite topic when it comes to Star Wars. We're going to talk Kenner. That's right. We're going to talk about Vintage Kenner line. So let's get started. My Kenner! Now believe it or not, around 1984, the impossible started to happen. Star Wars was dying. I know, that sounds hard to believe, right? Star Wars was dying. And the first ones to really notice this downtrend of Star Wars was, of course, Kenner. The toy company that brought Star Wars from the screens to our living rooms. I mean, it made Star Wars probably as popular as it was. Without Kenner or the toy line, Star Wars wouldn't have been the same. But after the release of Jedi, there was no Star Wars movie in the works. Nothing to look forward to. So the love of Star Wars was dying down. But not only that, kids that grew up on Star Wars with A New Hope and Empire, they were mid-teens now. They were moving out of Star Wars toys. I myself was one of those. In 1983, when Jedi came out, I was 11, going on 12. And by 1984, I was getting into my mid-teens. And a lot of us that grew up on Star Wars was doing that. And the younger kids, they were more into He-Man and Transformers and G.I. Joe. So what was Kenner going to do? Would they just let the biggest toy line they have die? No, no, they couldn't do that. By 1984, the writing was on the wall. Star Wars was figures were on the decline, and a lot of toys had clearance bins of Star Wars figures. That's right, epic figures like Prune Phase, Low Gray, Cloud Car Pilot. They were in the clearance bins. Even stores like KEB Toys were selling Star Wars Kenner figures two for a dollar. But Kenner wasn't ready to go away without a fight. So the Kenner team came up with a great idea to bring fans back to Star Wars. They would mix the two things that kids love the most. Action figures and coin collecting. I collect coins. I got a dandy collection. So for the 1985 line, Kenner decided to pack a coin with each figure. I don't, I don't really know why they came up with this. I guess it was some kind of gimmick to get kids to collect the coins. He-Man at the time came with a free comic book. So I guess Kenner thought, hey, what else do kids like besides comic books? Shiny coins. This one is a nickel. This one also is a nickel. And here's a quarter. And another quarter. And a penny. But what were they going to call this line? In the past, with each new line, they had a new movie to go along with it. Star Wars had the Star Wars figures. They moved into the Empire Strikes Back figures. Return of the Jedi figures. But there was no movie in sight. So what were they going to call it? Well, the masterminds at Kenner came up with a name. And they called it... Power of the Force. I like it a lot. And this Power of the Force line wasn't just going to pick up with Return of the Jedi. They were going to go back and make some of the figures that they didn't have time to make the first go around. Figures from A New Hope, which at that time we all could just call Star Wars. And Empire Strikes Back and some Return of the Jedi. Also with this line, they was going to bring over figures that were already released. You know, some of the Jedi Empire figures would come on over to the Power of the Force line. However, the Power of the Force line failed to do its job of bringing kids back to Star Wars. And by the end of 1985, the Power of the Force line was canceled, along with Kenner's Star Wars toy lines based on the droids and Ewok cartoon. But then again, who wanted figures based on that? Friends together, friends forever. 1985 marked the end of Star Wars, at least for about 10 years. Goodbye, old friend. The last group of figures in this line is known by collectors as the last 17. Wait, 17? That's right, if you're around collectors, you're here and refer to the Power of the Force as the last 17, the last 17 new figures. But why 17? Even myself as a collector, I always refer to them as the last 17, but it's kind of misleading. It's really the last 15. No. For some reason, collectors, like I said, even myself, counted Pablo and Lumet, I think that's his name, L-U-M-A-T, Lumet, I never really knew how to say it. Anyway, two Ewoks as a Power of the Force figure. However, as you can see here, they were released in the Return of the Jedi line, very late in the Return of the Jedi line. Very, very close to the end of that line. But they are on Return of the Jedi cards, so you can't really count them as Power of the Force figures like many other figures did. However, for this video, we are gonna count them as part of the last 17. So let's take a look at the last 17. She's only 17. First up, let's get those Ewoks out of the way. Why Kenner decided to waste their time releasing four Ewoks in the Power of the Force line is beyond me. 
The only thing I can come up with is maybe Kenner knew the Ewoks sold better than some of the other figures. Either that or being that the Ewoks are small, they were a lot cheaper to make. I'm not really sure if any of this is the reason they made four Ewoks, but I'll let you decide out of the two. Maybe it's a combination of both. Maybe they were cheaper and sold better. Who knows? So we have, as I mentioned, Pablo Lumet. Again, I don't know his name. Anybody know how to pronounce his name? And another one I probably can't say right, Orko. These Ewoks have weird names. And Roomba, I guess was the other one. These four Ewoks. Now I'm not an Ewok basher, unlike some people. But I don't really have much to say about these figures. They were nice, they looked good, but, over, but overall they really didn't add anything to the Star Wars line. And they wasn't much of a play value. In fact, they almost all looked the same. And for a line that was supposed to bring interest back into Star Wars, four Ewoks that all looked the same, I really don't see what Kenner was thinking about this. And this one is a name I can say, Amanda Man, cause it's easy. A man, a man, just put them together. Or you can just call him what some call him, the pickle guy. I've heard people say he looks like a pickle, looks more like a cucumber to me. But this is an impressive figure. I play one of the best looking and best detailed alien figures from the vintage line. And due to his odd shape and size, Kenner didn't make him just to save money. And one great thing, he came with a staff that was decorated with human skulls. Let's say that again. A kid's toy came with a staff decorated in human skulls. Now that's scary. <laughs> I bet you never saw that in your G.I. Joe line. The only real downfall with adding this figure to a line made to bring life back into Star Wars is that it wasn't someone we all knew from the movies. At this time, we didn't have Return of the Jedi on a videotape where we could watch it back and forth a hundred times in slow motion, picking out every little alien in the background. He's one of those blinks and you'll miss it aliens. And sure, Kenner did that a lot with the vintage line. But for the Power of the Force line, they should have tried to focus more on things kids knew and remember from the movies. Ones that kids would see walking down the toy aisle that would trigger them back into Star Wars. But again, overall, it's a very impressive looking figure. That's beautiful, man. The A-Wing pilot. Again, a figure based on someone we hardly even seen in the movie. And guess what? We didn't have an A-Wing to put him in. So Kenner released a pilot to a ship that kids didn't even have. Sure, sure, later in 1985, Kenner released an A-Wing and part of the Droids line. And yes, they have plans to bring this A-Wing over to the Power of the Force line in 1985. But they should have had it ready to go. They should have had an A-Wing on the shelves along with the figure on the shelf at the same time. It made no sense to release the figure and not have a ship for him. And while we're on the topic of fighters, why is it we have a Y-Wing fighter and no Y-Wing figure? but we have an A-Wing figure and no A-Wing to put him in. If anything, Kenner should have just released the Y-Wing pilot and brought over the Y-Wing that they already made for the Jedi line. Or like I said, had the A-Wing ready to go in the Power of the Force line. Latu, Barada, Nikto. Next up, a Barada. Kenner did it again. This was a great looking alien. Don't get me wrong, they made good looking aliens in the past, but Kenner really upped their game for the Power of the Force line. When most toy companies would have just phoned it in for a dying line and thrown out just to make a quick buck before the line completely died, not Kenner. They tried their best to bring people back into Star Wars were making some of the best looking figures of all the lines. They really put the time in and the money into these figures. Again, for the third time, Kenner decided to release an alien kids couldn't hardly remember. Now I know the alien is so great, and this is why Kenner always went back to the alien well. And they already made about every other alien. So finding one that fans knew was a hard task. So I don't really blame him for picking out this guy. And again, he's a great looking figure. You're a feisty little one, but you'll soon learn some respect. EV-99. I have to say it again. Kenner is on his A game with this figure right here. And finally, it was a figure based on a character from the film that most people knew. It's kind of surprising to me that this didn't come out early in the Return of the Jedi line. You didn't have to watch Return of the Jedi a hundred times in slow motion to see this guy. Everyone knew who he was. He had a speaking part. This was the kind of figure Kenner needed to make for the Power of the Force line. Figures like this would get kids' attention walking down the aisle when they were looking for the newest He-Man or Transformer. They would see figures like this and know he was from Return of the Jedi. But there was a problem with EV-99. His arms broke off very easy. Try to find one today with both arms still intact. It's very hard. Tiny plastic joint that held his arm to his body 
would snap off after a couple of twists of his arm. But this is a very thin droid, so that is probably why it broke off so easily. Han Solo and Carbonite. This is one of my favorite figures from the Kenner Vintage line. It's almost like a playset in a figure in one. You have Han Solo, and then you have a block of carbon for him to play in. Kenner really knocked this one out of the park. I can't imagine being a kid in 1985 and seeing this in the toy stores and not wanting to get it. This figure was made for the line. This is a figure that would get kids back into Star Wars. The only problem I can find with this one is the packaging. For kids just passing down the aisle, they might see this as some kind of hard plastic with a figure molded inside. What they should have done is maybe pack the carbonite on one side of the card and the figure on the other side of the card. Or just side by side so you could tell you got a figure and the carbonite block instead of putting Han Solo in the carbonite. But that's just a minor issue. The figure is great, even if Han Solo has no neck. The Imperial Dignitary. Kenner, you are on such a good roll. Here you are trying to bring life back into Star Wars, and you decide the best way to do it is to release an old ugly man. An old ugly man that no one remembers. An old ugly man that no one remembers that doesn't even have a weapon. I mean, even General Medin came with his little wavy stick thing. But by far, this is the worst figure in the Power of the Force line. Don't get me wrong, the figure looks great. But again, this is the Power of the Force line where they're trying to pull kids back in to Star Wars. Do they really think that this figure is going to make kids put down their toys to get back into Star Wars? I mean, come on, if you were a kid in 1985 walking down the toy aisle and you saw this, and then you saw this, which one would you buy? Most people are not going to say the old boring man that no one even knows who he is. Now, this figure is released in like the second wave of Return of the Jedi figures. I would have no problem other than he's boring. But again, they're trying to breathe life back into Star Wars. This wasn't a figure to do it. The Imperial Gunner. Now Kenner is back, and this figure is amazing. Again, this figure brings his back to Star Wars. First off, he wasn't just in the latest film. This guy was seen as far back as A New Hope. Again, as a child in 1985, we just called A New Hope Star Wars. But this is what I love about the Power of the Force line is that they wasn't focused on one movie. They could bring characters from all three previous films into a toy line. Also, being a trooper, kids wanted more than one of them. So that's always good for sales, a figure that kids can buy multiple times. This figure looks so good, I can't even find anything to criticize about it. Good luck. General Lando. Again, this is what Kenner should have been working on. It's a main character, one we all know. And it's amazing to me that he wasn't releasing the first line of Jedi figures. It's probably Lando's second most iconic outfit in the films. And Kenner did a great job adding a silk cape. In the past, Kenner had did the final cape for Obi-Wan and Darth Vader, which was kind of looking kind of dated by 1985 standards of toys. Don't even get me started on the cloak that the Jedi Luke came with. Woof! Again, this is what Kenner should have been focused on instead of Imperial Dignitary and Ewoks. Figures that kids knew and wanted by just looking at it. This is an outstanding looking Lando. Indoor Luke. And you know what I'm about to say. This is a figure that Kenner should have done. And we already had the Leia Endor, and somehow Luke was overlooked in the Jedi line. But here we have him, and he looks great. And they did a great job on the camo jacket. They were really getting better at the accessories. Like I said, the Jedi Luke cloak, horrible. But with the Lando cape, and now the Luke poncho. But there is a problem with this figure. Why, Kenner? Why did you glue the helmet onto this Luke Skywalker? The Princess Leia indoor figure, which came out a year before, her helmet came off. But for Luke, nope, the helmet's part of the head. I don't understand why they did this. The only thing maybe I can think of is maybe they thought kids would take the cloak off and the helmet off and they'll have a free Luke Jedi figure. But that's a stupid thought. I'm sure that's not why they did it. Maybe it was a save cost, but I can't see where just making a helmet could save that much money. In fact, they could just use Leia's helmet. So it makes no sense at all. This could have been one of the best figures of the line, but being the helmet's glued on his head, it's a mediocre, okay, Luke Skywalker. Nothing special. 
little short for a stormtrooper. Huh? Huh. Luke Stormtrooper. Yes, Kenner, this is it. This is what they should have done. This is by far the best figure to bring kids back into Star Wars. Not only is this based on an iconic character from the films, it's an iconic outfit, it's an iconic scene from the film. It has all three working for it. Kids know Luke Skywalker, they know Stormtrooper, they know the scene, they know the movie. This was the perfect figure for the line to bring kids back into Star Wars. And best off, his helmet came off, not like that indoor Luke. And I'm not sure about you, but as a kid back in the 80s, if I bought a toy and it had a helmet that came off or a mask that were moved, it added 100 points to me liking that figure. It became one of the coolest figures of my collection. Just something about taking helmets off or taking a mask off a figure made it one of the best. And like some of the other ones, I don't really have anything bad to say about the Luke Stormtrooper. Except, like Han Solo, he has no neck. For some reason, around 1985, Kenner really started hating necks. <laughs> R2-D2 with lightsaber. Kenner did it again. Took an iconic figure, an iconic moment in the film, and merged them together to make a figure that this line desperately needed to bring kids back. And how do you take an iconic figure like R2-D2 and make him better? Well, for Empire, they put a sensor scope on him. And for this, they put a lightsaber in his dome or his head, whatever you want to call it. The only really issues I have with this is one, I wish the light shade were shot out. They put a spring inside. But I guess after the whole fiasco with the firing Boba Fett, they wasn't about to put it in this R2. But it would have made the figure 10 times better. And the only other really major problem with the figure is the end of the lightsaber. It's kind of rounded at the end. Now I'm guessing they had to do this somehow to keep it in the dome better, but it just looks really odd. And the only other issue is the packaging. You can't even tell it's an R2 that came with his lightsaber. Uh, from just looking at the card, it looks like an R2 that blows apart, which would have been a very cool action figure to have. I think it would have sold better if kids knew what he was. Maybe if you could saw the saber sticking through his head on the package or something. I just don't think the package was putting it out there to the kids that this was R2 with a lightsaber. And now the final two figures were never released in the United States, only in Canada and overseas. First up, Anakin Skywalker. Wait, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. I know what you're saying. You're saying junk man. I had an Anakin Skywalker figure and I lived in the United States. So let me clarify, Anakin Skywalker was never released on card in the United States. He was offered by a mail giveaway in 1984 to people in the U.S. As for the figure, it's boring, but at least it's a key figure to the films. Unlike you know who. It looks good, but as a kid toy, it's nothing really that would make kids want to buy it or get them back into Star Wars. It was best at being a free action figure, but I'm sure at some warehouse, Kenner had thousands of these laying around, so why not throw it on a plastic card and sell it at the store? And that brings us to the final 17. And as one of the most famous figures of the vintage line, Joe Camel. I mean, I mean, Yak Face. Again, really great detail on this figure. A figure hardly seen in the movie. Don't blink or you're missing. But it's one good thing I like that he's rare, that he looks good. There's nothing worse than having to buy a rare figure that just looks like crap. At least, if you do track down a Yak Face and have him for your collection, it's a good looking figure to have in your set. But I'm not sure how this one would pull kids back into Star Wars. Because, again, like some of the others, they weren't really sure who he was. And this line, again, should have been focused on people like Luke Skywalker or Han Solo, Lando, or iconic scenes from the film. But it's a great looking figure, so I can't really give it any complaints. And here's a theory I have, and I can't back this up. Again, this is just a theory. Every time before a new line came out, Kenner would do a free giveaway. Boba Fett led to Empire Strikes Back. Almer Akbar led to Return of the Jedi. Anakin Skywalker led to Power of the Force. And if you ask me, I bet you if there was a second series of Power of the Force figures in 1986, we would have saw a free mail-in figure for Yak Face. Again, I can't back this up. Just a theory I have. Uh, love to hear what you think about it. But it seems most likely to me. So that's it. I look at the last 17, or the last 15, however you want to count it, the last Star Wars line, Power of the Force. Me personally, I love this line. They look amazing. And what I really like about this is I was out of Star Wars by the time this line came out. 
And I didn't even know they made some of these figures, or almost all of these figures, until about 1993 when I got back into vintage collecting. I had a collectible book, uh, and it listed all the figures. I was like, they made an Anakin Skywalker? Kept reading. Whew. A Luke Skywalker Stormtrooper? My mind was blown away when I found out there was a Luke Skywalker. And then found out there was a Han and Carbonite. It was amazing to find out all these figures I didn't know they made. So that's why I have a special love for this line, not just because of how they look, because they look great. Something about discovering it later, uh, almost 10 years after it came out, makes me really love this line. Unlike maybe the movie figures, you know, the Star Wars Empire and Jedi figure line, those really take me back to my childhood playing with them. Power of the Force line takes me back to when I started collecting vintage. If there was a second wave in 1986, what would it have been? Well, it seems Kenner's plan was to bring it into an expanded universe type line. They may have dropped the name Power of the Force altogether. I'm not really sure. There's concept art of Han Solo. Don't really have a name for him. I call him the swashbuckler Han Solo because it looks like some kind of pirate maybe. He's wearing a lot of gold. And Luke was a more of a full Jedi look. And there was no concept art for this, but a Kenner in-house booklet that was around 1985 talking about plans for 1986 shows a photo of Tarkin. Would Kenner have done Tarkin in 1986? Yes, they would have. In fact, their whole plan was to do a whole story where Tarkin escaped the Death Star and led a clone army. But hey, that's another video for another time. Thank you for watching and please hit the thumbs up so other people can find this video. Please subscribe and leave me some comments. I love reading comments and keep your eye at StarWarsJunk.net. Thanks for watching.